Welcome to the YouTube channel for Bible Biker Church in Rockwood, Tennessee. I am Fred Marshall, Elder and Associate Pastor. We pray that what you're about to see is inspiring to you as it is the truth in the Word of God as it is written. We pray that it blesses you and anyone that you share it with. If you like what you see, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also know that you can find us on Facebook under the page name Bible Biker Church. Thanks and have a blessed day. Alright, well good evening everybody. Welcome back to Throttle Up Biker Bible Study. Glad you guys are here tonight. Good evening. It's been, uh, it's, it's been an interesting week since the it last is. time we were in here. Uh, Sunday was a great day for those that were here. Um, for those that weren't, we had a um, nice little message and then several testimonies, but then a guy came in. We'll talk more about him afterwards. He uh, gave his testimony. So, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, met a lot of people this week. Talked to several people this week. I still do my Bible studies with the, with that guy on Friday, so that's still going good. A lot of things happening around here. Lots and lots of things. With all that being said, though, we started in the book of John last week. And we uh, did an overview in the first 18 verses of the book of John. Which is basically just the introduction itself. Uh, him saying, John, the son of Zebedee, right? We talked about that. And he's going to be talking about John the Baptist, and that's where we're going to spend a lot of time tonight, is on John the Baptist. That's not the same person. So um, we'll talk about him. But we talked about what the book of John is about. And there's three main areas that um, John wanted to cover in his gospel. And that is the birth, life, and ministry of Jesus Christ, uh, what he said, and how people reacted. So those are the three things that he really wanted to get people to understand. So that's what we're going to uh, continue talking about in the book of John. <clears throat> Again, when I teach out of John, I don't, I don't usually do it from a computer. I'll read the verse and we'll talk about it. I, when there are some differences in... The ESV that I type, teach out of and the King James, so we're going to talk about those differences. Uh, it's not a difference in the verse, it's just the words. They sound different, but they're the same. So we'll talk about that when it comes up. Anyway, um, going to be fun. Got uh, a lot to get over tonight, so we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, let me get us open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, once again we thank you for this place that you've given us. The place we can come and we can openly and honestly discuss your word. Lord, the, the things that you've given us uh, through the gospel to, of John that we're studying right now, but through the rest of the book as well. Father, we thank you for all those words, especially the ones in the red. Jesus said and gave us a, an inkling of what it would take to be with him forever in heaven. Father, we thank you that for that as well. Father, I thank you for those that are here tonight. Please bring the others back when you can. Uh, in your time, that is, Lord, not when you can. You can do anything any time you want. We know that. But, Father, just uh, when it's time, bring them back. Father, again, I thank you for everything. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. amen. All right, so we're starting uh, tonight in verse 19. So it says, and this is the testimony of John. And in the Message Bible, right there it says John the Baptist. So just just so that you know that why it says something there. Because that is, it's, this, is the, this is the information about John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? Who do you think you are? Now, it says the Jews sent priests. In the King James it says sent Pharisee. Those were sent from the Pharisees. Okay? So I, I was watching uh, one of my favorite pastors the other day give a sermon on these very verses and he brought this up I never really thought about it said uh, who are the Pharisees just who, who do you think they are the top priests the top priests now I like the way you said that the top priests so here's 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 another thing the Pharisees and the Sadducees they are the ones that control the Jewish religion it's not God anymore. It's the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were controlling the Jewish religion. 
They determine what you can and cannot do. They determine who can and cannot worship God. So here's what he went to. They are the ones that tell us we can't go to their church. You go. So when you think about this, that the Jews sent their top priests and their Pharisees and their Sadducees, it would be like a local church sending an elder or deacon saying, you don't belong here, move along. <laughs> And when he said that, I was like, oh my goodness. That's exactly what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I do want to continue with that theme and tell you what he said next. He said, so those churches that tell us we can't go there to worship, what do we do for them? What do we say to them? That's the right answer, Fred. Pray, Pray for them. Mm -hmm. You forgive them. As a matter of fact, they don't know what how, they do. that's it! That's it exactly right there. That's where I was going. What did Jesus say in the garden? Yep. Forgive them, Father, for they know oh, not, not what they do. Yep. Wow. <laughs> and even life and death was in their hands. Right. They decided if you lived or died. Or... Yep. They were the executioners. They, they hired Saul, right? Which is Paul. Yep. So they ask him, who are you? Who do you who do you think you are? I like the way that the message the message breaks it down to, into real simple terms. I like it. So 20 says, he confessed, this is John the Baptist, confessed, and did not deny, but confessed. I am not the Christ, or I am not the Messiah, I'm not the anointed one. I'm not I'm not the one that God has sent to, to save the world. He's not lying. Now, can you imagine some of these, dare I say, TV evangelists, if they were asked, who are you? Well, I'm the one that's been sent. Like the Pharisees would have. But he said, look, I, I'm not who you seek. I'm not the Christ. And they asked him, well, what then? Are you Elijah? Now, King James has, has a different name there, but it's just caused the way it's, uh, it's, it's spelled out there. Let me read this to you here. King James says the word Elias instead of Elijah. Why? I don't know. It's the same person. E-L-I-A-S. And they ask him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. So, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Then they asked, are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So again, now that the Pharisees are, are trying to pin him down on, on what he's doing, and it'll make a whole lot of sense here in a second. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. Now, we know from the first few minutes ago, that it's the Pharisees that sent him. Why? Because they think he's stirring up trouble. What do you say about yourself? Once again, here's a perfect opportunity for someone who wanted the limelight to say, I am, right? Two little words that don't mean a whole lot to us, but to them that meant a lot. <clears throat> We, we have to tell our bosses something. What are we going to tell them? So he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. This is from Isaiah 40, verse 3. As a matter of fact, I wanted to read that to you, so let me, let me get that up real quick. So Isaiah 40, I love this app, this is the uh, YouVersion Bible app, and it's, it's excellent. I can change what, ver, what, verse, 
version I'm looking at. Thank you for the universe. So here's, here's Isaiah 40, first couple of verses. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Same with the crowd. Let me, let me put that in the ESV so I can understand it better. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her war warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. <coughs> That she has received from the Lord's hand double for all their sins. Then here's where this one comes in. Verse 3 says, A voice cries, quote, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That's, he, he quotes that. Now, when I was a kid, I, I love telling stories about when I was uh, um, in high school down here at the, at the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, in the youth group, um, a junior deacon, all that, yada, 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 doesn't matter. But we did a lot of plays. We had a youth director that was really cool. Larry Sivis was his name. I love that guy. I think Sunday I told you I, I played Captain Kook in a Star Trek spinoff type thing. Well, we did a clown ministry. So we did the whole, you know, painted up our face, white, wore clown clothes and what have you. <coughs> My job was John the Baptist. So they flung open the doors that Sunday morning after, after the singing was done and the prayer was over, and here I come. Prepare ye the way of the Lord! Just like he would have. Now you have to think about that. They know the Old Testament. So when he says, I am the one that says in the wilderness, make straight your pathway for God. They know what that means. Yeah. They know that Christ is coming. <coughs> they absolutely know it. So let me get back over here now. parentheses around verse 24 <clears throat> says now they had been sent from the Pharisees we knew that already why is it important that John points that out again that parentheses is like an afterthought oh by the way did I actually say this now when I say that I, I'm not saying that John was forgetful when he wrote anything down because listen to this I heard this pastor talking about who wrote John and he said it's the words of John the favorite of Jesus but that it wasn't him that wrote it down now I don't know I haven't researched that okay but whenever you see those parentheses around it it's it's like a an in the margin type note so it's it's something that was added for emphasis. Verse 25 then says, They ask him, Then who, why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Now the prophet called out in uh, King James is um, Esaias. Esaias. E-S-A-I-A-S. -A -A Esaias. So, Elias and Esaias are the ones that they're calling out here, but we call them Elijah and the prophet Isaiah. Ooh, it makes it a whole lot more important now that you think back to what I just said. I'm the one in the wilderness calling out, prepare ye the way of the Lord. So they ask him then, why are you baptizing? Why is he called John the Baptist? It's not because the denomination of church he belongs to. <laughs> it's he because he baptizes with water. water. That becomes important in a few minutes. In the Jordan. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're across the Jordan. <clears throat> we'll see that in a few verses too. So, if you're neither the Christ, the Elijah, nor the prophet, why are you doing this baptism stuff? Now, let me tell you a little bit more about John the Baptist. Why is it that they're asking him all these questions? It's because he's claiming to be 
than one crying out in the wilderness. And he has a very large following that the, of people they can no longer control. And he has disciples. Because it does say in Mark, I think it's chapter 3. I'm not sure about that chapter. I'm not sure. And again, it could be Matthew chapter 3. I'm not sure now. I'm forgetting things. Anyway, the disciples of John are baptizing people as well. So, it says then, they ask him, why are you baptizing? Well, it's because John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who you do not know. John knows that Jesus is the Son of God. We talked about that. We said, even in his mother's womb, John jumped or, or leapt when Mary entered the room pregnant with Jesus. Sorry. Get excited. Anyway, so one who stands among you that you do not know. As a matter of fact, they don't know him yet because he hasn't really started speaking yet, but also they won't believe him. Exactly. Once he does start speaking, and this is an important point that he, John's almost like going, you can't see the forest for the trees. He's standing right there among you, and you don't even know it yet. Fast forward to today. What if I told you Jesus had come back and he was standing among you now? I'm not. That's all I'm saying. Would you believe it? Well, I believe he's in me. That's where I was going. See, you were right on, right on here, man. Right on here. He is within us. The spirit that is within us, given to us by the Father, is the same spirit that is in Jesus. Absolutely. Even he, Jesus, who comes after me, John the Baptist, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. One of the versions says, whose belt I cannot even loosen. Kind of an interesting way of looking at it, but even he, Jesus, who comes after me, John the Baptist, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Now remember, Jesus goes to John to be baptized. And John says, I am not worthy and Jesus said, it's not yet my time. I need you to do what you do, because it's the right thing to do, right? These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, right? The River Jordan we're talking about, where John was baptizing. Who's he baptizing? Now, here's where it really gets strange. He's baptizing with water before Jesus is crucified. So, puts a little spin on that, you have to be baptized to be saved. No, you don't. No, you don't. They were baptizing before Jesus was crucified. Oh yeah, well then, then, you, then you have to be saved before you can be this or that or the other. The only thing you have to be saved for is to get into heaven. Period. Right? You don't have to be saved to do communion. Because when did Jesus do communion? Uh, at the Last Supper. Before He died. Hmm. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan. The next day He saw Jesus coming toward them and He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John knew what Jesus was there to do. Jesus hasn't even started yet. Jesus has not picked his disciples yet. Mm -hmm. He hadn't had the Holy Ghost fall on him yet. He hadn't had anything happen yet. But John knew. But John knew. Here comes the one that I've been telling you is coming. Yeah. 
of whom I am not worthy to untie his shoe. He's going to take away the sin of the world. All of us know that we sinned. All of us. The sad part is they didn't know what that meant. Right. They didn't. They, they only knew it by the Pharisees or what the Pharisees instructed them to do. Run their sacrifices. And... Which was not to, to get them uh, forgiven of their sins, no, but to atone for the sins. To make payment, to make retribution rental for, for their sins. What was that? I'd say, I call it rental for a year. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, yeah, rental for a year. All right. This is verse 20. That's something I'm going to point out here. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. In the eternal pecking order, if you want to put it that way, in the hierarchy, if you want to put it that way, it doesn't matter. It's just his way of saying, Look, he's above me. I report to him. Because he was also before me. So how long has Jesus been? <clears throat> What's the first three words in the book of John? Same first three words in the book of Genesis. In the beginning. Since the beginning, since before the beginning, Jesus was there. And he's ranked way up here. Way above where John... John knows his place. John's not saying, hey, look, I, I know this guy. He does know him, but he knows him in a respectful way. He's like, he is before me. He is above me. He is the one that I cry out in the wilderness about. As a matter of fact, we read about John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. Wearing his, his fur coat and his fedora and eating them honey-flavored locusts. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, paraphrase there, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So this is him of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me, because Jesus is above him. I, John the Baptist, myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. John baptized Jesus before he's crucified. The heavens opened, the glory of God descended upon Jesus. Before he died, keep pointing that out for a reason, we'll get to it. Not today probably, but we'll get to it. But so that he might be revealed to Israel. <laughs> Israel's waiting for certain things to happen. They're waiting for someone to cry out to make straight the pathway of God. John. Then they're waiting for someone to come and save them. They think from Roman rule, but in reality it's from their own sins and they reject all of it all of it and John bore witness I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him now suddenly with the story has shifted to after Jesus was baptized the book of John does not record that event Okay? So, if you put together all the Gospels in chronological order, remember that John, the favorite of Jesus, is telling these stories in retrospective 70 years after it happens. Somewhere between 70 and 100 AD. After the destruction of the temple, but before he dies on the island. Pontinus? What's the name of the owl? Pontinus? Pontinus. That's it. So, so now he's saying, look, John the Baptist bore witness that I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, 
and it remained on him. So this is retrospective. This is what John the Baptist did. I, John, heard this story, and I'm writing it down this way. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Hey, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So John knew that what he was doing was just in preparation, and preparatory for what's coming. But he knows that because he sees the Spirit of God descend upon Jesus and stay there, that that is the Son of God and He is the one that will free us from what's going on. So then, and I have seen and have borne witness to that, this is the Son of God. So, uh, again, John the Baptist is saying, this is, who, this, is, this is why I'm here, guys. Listen to me. This guy's coming who I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. I, I got to dunk him in the water, and when I did, heaven opened and I saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove, and that's the one that God had told me would be his son. <coughs> Bless you. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent to me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same thing. And again, after the next day, after John stood with two of it, sorry, that's the next verse. Um, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, that's just a historical record, is all it is, of John the Baptist and what he was doing and, and what they were asking him. The cool thing is, this all happened prior, though, to Jesus starting his ministry. And the reason I say that now if I can get this to come up, search Bibles, John 1.35, I don't know how far it goes, we shall see. <coughs> Bless you. So 35 then says this, that the next day, again John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, <coughs> The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. It's not that John's disciples were abandoning him. It's just they've heard him talk so much about who this Jesus is, they wanted to follow him and see what's up. Right? Now, where does... Where does uh, oops. So 38, okay. Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, and this is red letters, right? This is Jesus speaking. What are you seeking? In other words, what are you doing? Why are you following me? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher. There's those parentheses again, so it's like an instruction or an afterthought kind of thing. Where are you staying? <laughs> Not what are you doing, not where are you going, not what you're having for lunch. Where are you staying? He said to them, <clears throat> come and you will see. 
So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Remember that the <laughs> Jewish day starts at 6 a.m. So it's not 10 o'clock in the morning, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay? Remember that. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Andrew. Who's the first disciple called by Jesus? Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ, the, the deliverer, the the anointed one. He brought unto him Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So, you are Simon, the son of John? You shall be called Cephas. Parentheses, which means Peter. So, Simon Peter's, bro Simon Peter's brother Andrew brought, uh, brought Simon to Jesus, who called him Cephas, which means Peter. Got it? Okay. There's a test next week. Make sure you study that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so the first two called are Andrew and Peter. But yet the next day, sorry, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. All right, so these three guys are all from the same place in Galilee, right? Fishermen, that's right. It doesn't say that right here, but, you know, they're just, they're just common folks. Yeah. You know, so it's like Jesus wound up in Midtown and gra get, grabbed a couple of guys from Kingston or Harriman or Rockwood. Just regular folk. Then Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I need you guys to think about this for a second. <coughs> Nazareth was not a great city. Right. <coughs> So Andrew and Peter are telling Philip, and Philip goes and tells Nathaniel, man, we found this guy from Oliver Springs. That's the Messiah. <laughs> now, I'm not saying anything's wrong with Oliver Springs. I'm just giving you an idea of what we're talking about here. It's not a thriving metropolis. And it's the son of Joe. Who is Joseph? It's like saying John Smith. The son of John Smith is the Messiah. Ooh, I gotta be careful how I say that because some people actually believe that. Anyway, so yes, that was a dig. Yeah. <laughs> so Andrew, Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, look, guys, this is this is he who we have been waiting for, spoke of by Moses and the prophets, and he came out of that little place up there called Nazareth, and he's the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Hello? Can anything good come out of Wartburg? Can anything good come out of Oneida? Can anything good come out of Ulthawa? <laughs> Philip said to him, Well, just come and see. Come and see. John the Baptist said, This is he of whom I've been telling you. Which means... Because we read a few verses ago, since Simon, Peter, and Andrew were disciples of John the Baptist, they've been hearing about this guy for a while. They were Jews, so they knew that the Christ was coming, and they also heard John the Baptist say, He's among us now. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said, In red letters, Behold! An Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. 
So right away, Jesus is telling aloud that Nathaniel coming toward him is an Israelite and he is not a liar. That everything he says is truthful. Why? Well, last week we talked about Jesus going with his mother to the wedding and then recording that as his first miracle, his first sign. This would be his second thing, I would imagine, that he can tell about a person before he's introduced. The same way he will later on with the woman at the well. So he'd already gone and spent time, rebuked the devil, and then he went to the wedding, turned water into wine, and then he met them? In John, it talks about the wedding first, and then this, yes. I thought they were at the wedding with them. No. Yeah. Nope. Nathaniel said to him, how do you know me? <clears throat> Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Uh... I was sleeping on the job. <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I was uh, counting rocks. What, what was I doing under the? Oh, you saw me under the fig tree, uh, eating the farmer's figs. <laughs> so, Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, which means teacher. You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. So already now, John the Baptist knows who he is. Then you have Andrew, you have Peter, you have Philip, you have Nathaniel. All of them saying, you are the Messiah. They believe already. Now, here comes the question. Later on in, in the ministry, Jesus is going to say, you believe because you see. But what you can't see is what you need to believe. Paraphrased badly, but... I saw you sitting under a fig tree, but you didn't see me. Yet you believe I am who I say I am. I love how it all meshes together like that. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than this. That end. I apologize. Oh, one more verse. One more. Fifty-one. Wasn't quite as raised for tonight as I thought it was going to be. One. Fifty-one. Service. And he said to him, truly, truly, or the King James says, verily, verily, there, that I love the way it says that. Verily, verily, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. <clears throat> John the Baptist has already seen that now. Now Jesus is telling the rest of them, you're going to see it as well. So what happens in the transfiguration? Right? Mm -hmm. He's foretelling them, look, you, you see me here, but wait, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. How's Bachman say that? You ain't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. well, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Anyway, so he's, he's saying, look, you're going to see the glory of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, which is what he calls himself when he's here. Right? 100% man, 100% God, put himself below the angels, we find out in um, Hebrews, right? So that he could be our great counselor later on. And this is where it starts. Here he's called his first ones. His first four or five. Now, what, what has always interested me and made me think, why? This is John writing about John the Baptist. 
Why isn't John the Baptist one of Jesus' disciples? Because that's not what he was called to do. Right. That was not his purpose. He was about. He was here to say, "Hey, before the book gets written, here's the movie." <laughs> and bad, bad. Anyways, so there's there's this guy coming, and he's gonna be great, and you need to be ready for him. Oh, by the way, he's already here. So now he's starting to gather his his troops, his forces, to go out and minister to the world. When uh, this this is the way that. I believe that when he walked out into the water, he was a man. He was just a man until he got baptized. When he came up in the dove, the Holy Spirit came on him. In order for him to do his ministry, the Spirit of God had to enter him because he was a man. So he was a man under the power of the Holy Spirit, just like we are. Right? I, I can't I can't agree with that. I, I just can't. I know what you're saying and I understand it. I do. Why don't you agree with that? Because in Hebrews it says that he made himself lower than the angels. So he, he Was that after the baptism? No. That's how he became how he became man was I, I see what you're saying I get it I just let me let me wrap my head around that for a little bit because I never thought of it that way I know that when he's on the cross and he's like Father God Father Father why have thou forsaken me right. he's hundred percent man right there he's not God at that point right so does the spirit ascend or descend on him and then when he goes up on the cross go away from him it doesn't say that. So, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about that. Because there's more to it. There is a whole lot more to it. That's why Paul calls it the mystery of Christ. Right. Ooh! That's good stuff, huh? Questions? That's the end of chapter 1. Mm -hmm. That's the easy chapter. I did this with Jeremy yesterday, so he is keeping it. Good. And I'll do this with Michael tomorrow. Let me go ahead and uh, tell the internet people goodbye. We're going to turn the camera off to do our um, personal prayer request. If you have anything that you need to ask me about or if you have a prayer request, please send it in. Uh, we do pray over things here and it's always good to see you. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks.